Um, with me today, and I see him online, is Brian Mastiga. Brian is a network engineer at the Research and Prediction Network for Uganda, also known as RENU. Since 2021, the Internet Society Foundation has supported Renu's work to expand internet access for the research and education community in Uganda. And you'll hear a bit more about how they're doing this in just a few minutes. Um, I'm going to request a screen share so I can send a quick, I can share a quick overview of our organization. That's okay. I hope you all can see my screen. So a little bit about us, we were, we were established in 2019, the Internet Society Foundation was established in 2019, and we exist to support the positive difference the internet can make to people everywhere. Our work promotes the development of the internet as a global technical infrastructure a resource to enrich people's lives and a force for good in society. Our vision is an internet for everyone. And our mission is to champion ideas and enable communities to unlock the internet's potential to tackle the world's evolving challenges. So currently our portfolio has five funding areas, um, as you see here. And the one we'll focus on today is our BOLT program. You can find out more about all of these programs on our website at isocfoundation.org. So the focus of this lightning talk is innovation around the internet. And that is exactly what our BOLT program was designed to do. The program launched in 2021 and it aims to empower teams of innovators around the world to develop solutions to internet connectivity. And one of these innovators is here with us today. Together with his team at Renu, Brian is working to extend internet access for the research and education community in Uganda. And I've prepared five lightning questions to ask Brian to shed some light on the work Renu is doing and, de and delve into how it's supporting responsible and sustainable innovation around the internet. Um, I'm going to pause here and let Brian come on and tell us a little bit about himself and about Renu as well before we get into the questions. Brian, do you want to jump on quickly? Brian, I think you're on mute, if you can hear me. We'll give him a couple of minutes. We're having some internet challenges in Kampala this morning where we're both based. So it might be that he's trying to get his audio going. So can you hear me now? Sorry about I that. can hear you now. Sorry about that. Uh, no uh, worries. Again, Go ahead. Uh, Renu is the National Research and Education Network for Uganda. Across the globe, there are a number of national research and education networks in different countries. And what we do specifically is bring together universities, research organizations, schools, different entities that are also globally with their peers. So that's in a nutshell who Renu is and trying to do and who I am. Thank you, Sue. Thanks, Brian. Um, so I'll jump into the questions for you. Um, how would you describe the mission of your organization, uh, the Research and Education Network for Uganda? Yes, thank you, Sue. So in terms of just looking at what the Internet Society is trying to do in their own mission, and that is Internet for Everyone, 
we as Renu are leveraging the power of the internet as a tool to achieve our goals and our goals being collaboration with the different organizations that are on the same network with us, that's education and research. And the idea is while we use that as a tool, it is because of the power that the internet brings across. It is easier because back in the day, we would have people coming from Europe, come to Uganda, uh, get some data and then go into a plane and then go back to Europe with that data. You can share that data over the internet. And that is powerful, meaning that it doesn't take a lot of time that we had to board planes, go through the transit, that is very annoying. Now we are able to do that on the internet without having all those nitty gritties around us. And that helps us a lot. It also comes down to innovation, that if I can have internet with me here, with that, then we are able to solve our local problems as a community. And one is with Internet Society Foundation. How do we help our students during the time of COVID? And that was powerful for us. Thank you. So, are you still there? Okay, we seem to have lost Sue. Can Hi, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> so sorry. Sorry about that, Sue. Yeah, the internet is sliding in and out. Um, but thank you for sharing. I, I, I caught most of, of what you were saying, Brian. Perfect. So, the next question from my side is... Um, just to ask you to tell us a little bit about Edurom. So last year, Renu received a $200,000 grant from the Internet Society Foundation to extend access to Edurom, which is a free global Wi-Fi roaming service for the research and education community. Brian, do you want to tell us a little bit about Edurom, how it works and what problem it is solving? Thank you, Sue. So Edurom stands for Education Roaming. And the idea was simple, that if I have a student coming from University X and they have gone to another University Y, they can still remain connected because we classify them as students. Students do not belong to a university. They do not belong to a school. These are students globally. And the idea is internet is powerful. How do they remain connected even when they move across different universities? That's the power of Edurome, the ability for students, researchers, and staff members of these institutions to move across different universities, different institutions, and still remain connected to the internet without requiring an ICT password, person to give them passwords or usernames or something like that. But the idea was then started globally, that I can move from country Y, go to country X, and still use my same credentials from my home institution to get connected to the internet. And that was powerful. Now, with that, that was the idea of Edium, that seamless roaming and why remain connected to the internet. And that is for students, anyone involved in the research and education it's fraternity so across nice. the globe. So for Metro Edium is the ability to break the boundaries of I don't have to go to a university campus or the boundaries of a university. Why not if I am at home? Why not if I have gone to a mall? Why not if I have gone to a restaurant? I still need internet because innovation and research doesn't only happen within the confines of a university or a research institution. It happens. So one Ideas sent hit us or forever. One she sent. Sorry, I received Sorry, a lot Brian. Of Louise, could you uh, mute your mic, please? Thank you. Okay. Yes. So research, innovation, learning doesn't only happen within the confines of within an institution. It happens anywhere. I can have a nice idea while I'm taking a cup of coffee. And may, maybe that's where I always have the nice ideas for myself. I'm speaking for me. But COVID actually was the driver for this. We were only connecting institutions within their campuses. We are providing huge amounts of capacity to the institutions within the campus of the institution. But with COVID, the students, the staff, everyone went home. 
And that means they left a lot of capacity, a lot of, of data seated within the institutional campus. What we had to do, Metro Edro, allowing that internet to go over to their closer places that could be a cafe, could be a mall, could be at home, could be something else, something that is away from the institution. And this was done for free, thanks to the Internet Society Foundation. That's great. And can you share a few examples of how the students and the target communities are, are benefiting from EduRome? Just a few Thank real life so. examples. So one of the things that quickly came up was online learning. And uh, online learning can only happen when you have two things, a good internet connectivity and devices that can enable you to do that. And one of the things that people quickly realized when they went home is that we are struggling with data bundles from our mobile telecom networks, not to say anything wrong, but they were struggling with that and that wasn't sufficient for them. Secondly, it was quite expensive for that. Then we had university students also doing their exams online and also learning online. Now, away from the educational side, then we go to the research side. Edurum has been such a game changer for them because now you have medical personnel accessing databases that would have ideally had to be accessed from within the medical institution that they can be able to access that as they're moving and they can be able to provide diagnoses even from their homes at that time. That means research to combat COVID actually happening even with people from the home. That collaboration was powerful. And Edurum helped enable pool that without anyone thinking about the cost related to buying internet bundles, to doing the security setup behind. That was powerful, many of them. And many other examples came about after that, that we had students that didn't need to flood, didn't need to flood their institutional institutional grounds, they could remain in their hostels and they could be able to do that. For us, that, that really changed the dynamics for the education facilities here in Uganda and many and many more institutions demand more of the service now. Thank you, Sue. Thank you and, and thank you for sharing some of those examples. I know that many of the participants in the room also have an idea of how COVID and the subsequent lockdowns really affected people's connectivity and access to services, information, loved ones, et cetera. So we at the foundation are really proud to have been part of coming up with a solution to help one group, which is students to really stay on top of education. Um, at this point, I'd like to open it up a little bit for questions, if there's any questions from, from the floor. Hi, Sue. Yes. So, yeah, it's it's Mark Arvel. I'm the uh, consultant here for ISOC, uh, handling the on-site uh, moderation. Hi, Mark. So, um, just to say hello, first of all, and there are a couple of people in the audience. So, uh, I'm just looking to see if they want to comment or ask a question from here. No, nobody uh, wants to raise any right. points at this time. So, back to you for um, seeing if there are any questions in the chat. I see a hand from, oh, it's a bit of a long name, Sivas. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, you mentioned about uh, um, uh, Internet Society creating some sort of an infrastructure to utilize uh, the available bandwidth in institutions uh, um, across the city. And uh, how did you do that and did you set up Wi-Fi routers or some sort of temporary infrastructure or did you make it a kind of a permanent uh, process by which uh, students at home could uh, access uh, the institution's uh, Wi-Fi resources, broadband resources? How did you do that? Brian, I believe that's you. Oh, okay, can you hear me clearly too? Yes. Ah, okay, so what we did is we did have to set up access points across across some metro areas. We did have to do that, and thanks for the for the money, all the funds that we got from Internet Society Foundation. We did have to do that, 
and it is permanent infrastructure. It's not something that we did for a one time. So we had to choose different hotspots and these hotspots could be malls. So we had to negotiate with the owners of the malls. We had to negotiate with a couple of people for things around power, things around how we how we put our access points, how we protect the access points. So it, there, there was a lot of work in the background, but we were able to achieve that and create a number of access points around that. We also deliberately provided and went to particular, I would say, housing estates. And in those housing estates, we put a number of access points because it is easier to deal with one or no housing extents and we put those access points there. The bandwidth is for free. I have to mention that, that the bandwidth, that the use of the internet in there is for free, but you have to come from an institution that is within research and education because they are credentials to, to use the service. So it's not just one open big Wi-Fi for anyone to use, but it is something that is directed towards the research and education community in Uganda. So I would say, to answer your question, they, it is permanent. The service is free. We did have to negotiate with a couple of building owners and own and stuff like that. And the infrastructure is indefinitely there. Thank you. Excellent, excellent work. And uh, that is something that could be emulated in other parts of the world. Thank you. And uh, something just to add on to what we're doing is we quickly realized that the scope of that is is good, but quite small. So we are trying to look at other ways, something like a modern or movable device, like a MiFi device that we can give particular students. And once they're broadcasting Edurom, someone else can hook onto that. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, my, my question was going to be around around that is just ask how you're planning on building on this work going forward. Ah, thank you, Sue. Yes, so we we did we did Metro Edurum and from the word in itself, it is Metro, meaning that we went to particular busy areas, Metro areas, and we were able to negotiate with a couple of people to do that because they have good power and all of that. And we extended it up country to different places in the country and all of that. The problem still remains, and the goal of Internet Society is internet for everyone, meaning we can't leave the rural areas away. Just because they do not have the financial mass or all the attraction for doing this, we can't. So one of the ways we are trying to do that is by bringing portable MiFi devices. So these MiFi devices don't require, they have a battery in them. That means they can be charged and they can be moved around. And with them, there is Edurum, meaning that if Sue has a portable MiFi device, Brian can benefit from it, even if Sue has it, meaning four other people can actually benefit from Sue having the device. So by distributing a number of these devices to different places in rural areas within the country, that means you have so many moving Edurum hotspots. We are not, it's no longer locked to one place. I have to go to the mall to access Edurum. No, it is now movable. I can move with this wherever I want. The goal again being internet for everyone, but again, research, innovation, and ideas happen anytime, anywhere. And that is particularly the slogan for the product that we are trying to do. We are doing some other stuff. We are trying to look for access points that do not require power, but can use solar. Uganda is blessed with a lot of solar energy. That means if we have a solution that can do solar, we have already discussed this with different people. Back to you, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's really that's really interesting. And I hope um, that this example has highlight, highlighted the ways in which innovation can expand the possibilities for Internet access and connectivity worldwide. I'm going to pause again and see if there's any other questions from the floor. Thank OK, you. Sue, I'm just checking the room here in Addis if anybody wants to comment or raise a question. No, no hands going up. Okay, I'm sure they're very uh, uh, fascinated by all the presentations and the detail. And anyway, back to you, Sue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Um, Brian, is there anything else that we haven't chatted about today that you think is important to touch on? Yes, uh, I think one of the things was the, the lessons learned in this is that what I have seen is looking at the bigger picture 
And that's why I keep on referring to the, the mission of Internet Society, because I believe that is the much, much bigger picture. When we look at the bigger picture, then the ideas begin to happen. What we did is something that the commercial service providers would look at in terms of uh, in terms of the money, what is the funding, what's the money that we shall get in terms of pushing this project. But the lesson learned in there is that beyond is we need to handhold some of our our innovative ideas, our innovative hubs, our innovative students, our innovative staff in whichever form they are. Because with those innovations, they will give us much more than we would have hindered right from the start. And for our part of the world, internet connectivity is one of the biggest hindrances. But by allowing that to no longer be a hindrance, you've opened up the way that people do not have to think, oh, my internet is bad, or oh, I have to buy this internet. These are the bundles. People are thinking beyond that. They're talking of things like what the rest of the, the first world, world is now talking about, metaverse. Why can't we not participate in stuff like that? Why can't we not contribute in stuff like that? And I think that, to me, is human development, human betterment, is the real end goal. Thank you, Sue. I hope I haven't taken a lot of your time. No, that was great. Thank you. And and that is a, is a good note for us to wrap on. Is basically one of the things that our team is uh, grappling with around uh, connectivity and programs like Bolt is, you know, how do communities themselves define innovation and what do they consider innovative um, as we're looking at various connectivity solutions around the world. And it's it's great for us to have partners like Renu who are thinking very deeply around how to roll out this work, but also build on it and how to apply it in different contexts and spaces. So we want to thank you so much for your hard work and your diligence. And thank you to everyone that joined us this morning. And I wish you all a good day. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And thank you, everyone uh, here in uh, in Addis at the IGF for attending. And another couple of people who just joined us as we're finishing. I'm sorry about that, but uh, anyway, it, it was only. Uh, <laughs> There'll be a recording bit. available. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And uh, thanks uh, to the technical support this morning for both our Internet Society lightning talks. Much appreciated for your for your uh, support. Thank you. Bye.